Welcome back to the Skid Factory. We're down here with the patrol at Evolution Tuning. Here's our man Chappie. Welcome our, back, gents. He's our diesel guy, and it's time to put the patrol up on the rollers and see how it goes. We've done about 500 k's in the car since we've had it running. Guz, he's been driving it around, showing off to all his mates, and hasn't really missed a beat. So we reckon she's ready to to put up on the rollers and give it a little tweak. Chappie's going to show us how to do this properly. I was just going to send that screw in hard, but uh, apparently there's other ways to do it. So let's uh, let's see how we do it. What do you reckon? Let's go through it, boys. See what it wants to do. What's the process, Chappy? Uh, basically, I always like to um, first things have a chat with the customer, see what they're trying to achieve, what they're using the car for, get a bit of history on the car. Obviously, I've seen the videos on this, so I know as much about it as you boys do at the moment. Go for a drive, make sure it sounds good. Then we put on the rollers, give it a hit, see where it's at. Go from there. Start moving on the pump and uh, see what it wants to do. Sweet ass. Cool. Let's go. Now you don't go telling your homies this, but basically, in between there, yeah, see how it's slopping around. Yeah, it's too advanced. It means it's rolled out too far, so we can come back a bit. When you say don't tell the homies, you mean don't film that part or what? <laughs> uh, probably not. That's just the rough guide when we chuck a pump on. That's where I start, and then we change it from there. Cool man, so we've just done a first run on the thing, just to get a ballpark idea where the car's at and how it's performing. Um, honestly, considering no wastegate, we're basically just free boosting this thing. Um, it's pretty good. It hit about 26 pound at peak. It's like 26 to one AFRs when it's on boost, which is super lean, which is why you're not, Gussie's not seeing high EGTs or anything wild out of this thing. Peak torque rolls on nice and early. It's two grand, she's on. 20 to 1 AFRs out of the hole, so it's not fuely, it's really nice pump control, nice fuel control of it. Um, so now I think we will go into the compensator, see if there's a little bit of room to move, see if we can uh, tweak it up a little bit more and just see what she does, see how it reacts to our changes. Are we gonna, what are we gonna do with the compensator, add fuel or? Yeah, so we'll go inside and see if there's any shim stacks in there that are actually limiting how much travel the fuel pin has, compensator pin. Um, if we've got some stacks in there we can take out, we can let the uh, fuel pin travel down a little bit further, see if it wants to inject a bit more fuel. Every pump's kind of different, sometimes they react to it, sometimes they don't, so we just need to get a baseline go and make some changes and just see how it responds. So basically we've just pulled the uh, compensator pin out of the pump. This is the, our shim stacks that we were talking about before. So essentially what we're doing is limiting how far down this compensator pin can travel inside the fuel pump. The further down it travels, we can see we have like a eccentric lobe or whatever here. Fuel pin can travel further out, I means it strokes out more, puts in more fuel. So we'll take a couple of shim stacks out, we'll see if it wants to respond and make a bit more power, and we'll go again. So basically we just did another run, we took some shims out of the pump, it's picked up power, we would have picked up pretty much 20 horsepower on the banger. We still got some shims in there, so we'll go in, have another crack and see what it wants to do. Take more shims out now? Yeah, take a few more shims out. So I only went about half of them. So I just wanted to see if it was going to respond to what I'm trying to do. If it didn't make any difference, we'd leave it alone. Um, but it's responding, which means the pump's got more legs left in it. So we'll see what she wants to do. So we add fuel and that fuel makes heat and that drives the turbo harder. So we end up with a more efficient engine, even though we're technically richening it up. Correct, But that yeah. turns into turbine power, which makes more boost. Correct, expanded. so our boost has gone from, what, 26 to 28? So it jumped a couple of pound as well. Um, naturally, again, because you've got no wastegate, we don't have a way of controlling that besides literally using fuel. Okay, so 
if we pull this fuel, add more fuel now and it goes to like 30 plus, well then we have to pull the fuel out, slow the turbo down, get rid of that drive energy. can't give any more, that's just the pump maxed out now. So, the first time, had I taken the shims out and it made exactly the same, that's just all the pump has in it. But that's about right. You're expecting 180 or yeah. so, and that's right in the ballpark, so. We can put those shims back in now, leave it where it was, and then we'll play around with some timing and just see how it responds to timing. Um, got the apprentice now, cracking the pump. What we're gonna do is just play around with the timing a little bit. Um, essentially, Usually if you buy a pump, the pump builder will tell you what kind of timing they want because it's their pump, that's where they're happy with them. Still goes to show that every motor is different, injectors are different, compression ratios are different, how the motor, turbo, every combination is kind of different. So we like to just let the dyno tell us where the pump timing's happy. So we've got our boost and fueling set now. Gonna go in and just move the pump a little bit at a time and just see how it responds. If we don't see a good change or anything that we wanna see, lock him off and we'll leave it where it is. So we've just kind of marked it so we know where it is now and we can return back to that if we need to. So basically pulling some timing out of it, we can see it's actually come up on boost that little bit quicker. We can see our boost is higher, boost is higher on those two runs back to back there. Basically, because the timing's more retard, more energy's going out the exhaust valve to drop the turbo. So it is responding a little bit better down here, but we're pretty much losing power virtually the entire way across the curve. So we did not make the right choice. So we're gonna start tweaking that timing back forward and see where it's happy. When we originally did this pump timing, all I did was basically put it in the middle of the quite generous slots that it has. I've no idea how it would run if you actually put it to the maximums, considering how little we're moving it? Uh, terribly. So people come in all the time and they think more timing is more better. Doesn't always happen that way. Usually it sounds like there's milk bottles rattling around in the top of the combustion chamber there. And um, you'll see it there as we pull timing, the torque curve comes back and back and back and they make more and more torque. So this thing honestly was pretty damn close. So I think we're just gonna go back to where we were and make sure it's good. I think we're done, the patrol is doing the job. We've made 192 horsepower, which is pretty bloody good for a TD42 that hopefully will last a long time. What do you reckon, mate? Should be good, man. It's making good power, good torque. We've made a nice little gain over where the thing came in. Um, we gave it a bit of a Hail Mary run before. The old fan was struggling to get good airflow through that uh, heat exchanger in the front. So we just let the thing cool down it picked up like three horsepower difference. So it's not a massive difference, but all in all, she went 167 to 192, 520 newton meters up to about 610. So plenty of power to get Gussie into a bit of trouble out the bush. Can you explain why you use horsepower and newton meters? <laughs> <coughs> because they're the highest of each, each, uh, oh, okay, each yeah. one. That makes it's just a lot Queensland of things, I think, isn't it? We talk horsepower and newton meters because they're both the highest. Okay, cool. <laughs> that actually makes sense. It's just cheating. When we're not making a lot of power, we need to use the highest figures yeah, to look cool. The diesel, so like... you don't want to say you make 100 kilowatts. That doesn't sound that fun. Mm, so yeah, but no, it did everything we wanted to do. So that's good. Uneventful dyno uh, run is a good dyno time. Yeah, that sounds good to me. Cool. I don't want to be pulling things apart. No guess... ejecto Welsh plugs. No, <laughs> no, not this time. <laughs> I, I guess our next uh, thing to do with this is actually get the get the car out into the bush or up the beach or whatever, and uh, we're gonna. Know, give Gussie a bit of tutorage on how to forward drive properly and you know how to generally live life properly I think is part of that too which I've been doing that for a while so yeah what do you like you got a forward drive truck what do you got a cruiser don't you yeah we got a hundo at home you grandpa's around. car I'll come go, out for a run go a little red big red or something 100 series would love big red <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. oh, yeah. 
<laughs> Marzi's too hectic. That's that's for it's someone you, to learn. It's not the right thing to do. It's where you end up damaging things, yeah. panels, all that kind of stuff. No, hey, we can go to a Ford Rock Park or something. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. All right. Let us know. I'll be down. Sweet. That's all we got for t- this episode. Again, thanks to uh, the people that have helped us with this build. Uh, more specifically, All States Diesel, Josh, JH Hilux, and the crew, and of course Lindsay from Tillex. Uh, they've been uh, instrumental in this build, just not only putting stuff together for me, but actually just giving me good advice, and that's worth its weight in gold, as you would know. So uh, hit those guys up if you need anything old diesel-y with lots of pumps and things ticking around and burrows <laughs> check out josh's uh, jh hilux uh, instagram he's pretty entertaining and also educational check out chappy if you want your uh, diesel tuned up evolution tuning in biwa he's a good chap help out where we can of course love having these boys in the shed it's always a good time sweet And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. So someone actually sent that to me because turns out I didn't realise at the time but at the start of all my videos I'm always like, alrighty, today on the dyno. So that literally came in the mail. Alrighty. Alrighty. Gussie, use your hands as your eyes. Put your hands on top of the diff and look for it. Also, check, to, check, the, the, light check the, the ground because it may hit the ground. It's only the alternator post. It's only the nut off the alternator, bro. <laughs> It's not yeah, a build unless you lose something. Did you see that, Chappie, yeah, last week? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man! <laughs> what are you finishing? <laughs> <laughs> Cut it.